first order of business, as usual, is uh, checking out a different beer. This is Bavarian Dark Lager from District Brewing Company in Regina, Saskatchewan. The tasting notes uh, describe it as malt forward with notes of toffee, raisin, and chocolate. Yeah, a fair bit of that toffee note in there. That's kind of neat. It's been a while since I've had a lager. So tonight I'm looking at this piece of vintage Radio Shack equipment. Now, in the States, uh, Radio Shack ceased to exist a few years ago. But in Canada, that was uh, what, almost 20 years ago, 2004, I think it was, that Radio Shack stopped existing, at least by that name. They became a couple other things since then. But, uh, yeah, the Radio Shack name hasn't existed in Canada for decades. So what's in the box? It is this multimeter. Oh, sorry. There we go. English side. Manual auto range dual display multi-reader, uh, multimeter. But the interesting thing about this one is it has a computer interface. So this unit is from 1994. And as I said, what makes it interesting and fairly unique in low cost multimeters is that it has a computer interface. Now, of course, MS-DOS software isn't going to be all that useful to me. And I think this is written for probably, well, Windows 95, I'm guessing, um, is the Windows software. So yeah, that's not really going to work very well on my Linux computer, but I think I might have uh, found some solutions for that on the good old internet. Anyway, I found this thing um, earlier this week when I was digging through a storage cabinet at work looking for something else. And I remembered that we actually had two of these. And the reason we bought them is because of that serial port, which allows data logging. So what's in here? We have a Radio Shack branded battery. So that's no doubt 15-ish you know, years old. So I doubt it's any good. But that doesn't matter because we had this thing powered from a 9-volt battery eliminator. Which is just that, a 9-volt battery snap. That's kind of neat. There's a little condom for the battery. So that if it leaks, it doesn't uh, cause all kinds of problems. That's kind of nice. Looks like we had to customize that to make it work. Not a big deal. That's interesting. U.S. and German patent. Uh, manufactured in Korea, and then all the different Radio Shack variants. There's the model number, 22-168A. If you look that up online, you can find the manual and a bunch of projects and stuff for it. One of which I'm going to try later. So, the cables that are with this, there's a set of leads. Fairly standard leads, they're not silicone wire or anything. But they're nice and lengthy. And then there is the serial cable all mixed in here. So standard DB9 on that end and these funky little bent pins on this end, which if I remember correctly, yeah, plugs into there. And that allows you to pull data out of the meter live and uh, just save it onto your computer for later analysis. And that's the reason that we uh, bought these things at work in the first place. If I remember correctly, they were about a hundred bucks or something each. So expensive by Radio Shack standards, but as a multimeter with data logging functions, that's pretty cheap, especially back then. Yep, it works and there's no reason why it shouldn't. It didn't have batteries dying in it. It was just sitting there working. First thing, let's uh, let's test its old battery. I'm gonna guess it's eh, seven volts. That's better than I expected, actually. So I think what I'll do is just quickly compare this thing for accuracy against the most accurate meter that I've got available to me, which is this uh, Fluke 298. I'll just do a few quick tests. It won't be. Uh, too extensive. So here is DC volts mode. I've got five volts on my little power supply over there. They're both tied in parallel here. I'd call that pretty much the same. So 
So there's 19 volts coming out of here, 1903, 18.986. Definitely close enough for most uh, non-lab grade jobs. That's just fine. Actually, this is an auto ranging, or not auto ranging, so there you go. Yeah, that's 200 volt range. This one is auto ranging, so yeah, that's reasonable enough. No complaints there. Okay, let's try impedance. I've got our resistance, I guess. I've got this stack of resistors in parallel here, which if I remember correctly is close to 75 ohms. Yes, yeah, 72.85 on the fluke. 72.9 on the Radio Shack. That's pretty reasonable. Uh, what are the leads measuring at? Less than half an ohm there. On the Fluke, I'm going to guess it's about the same, if not a bit lower. Yeah, 0 0.15, 0 0.16. So not enough to throw a measurement like that off. Let's try a high resistance. How about 25K? Yeah, I know it doesn't have to be a power resistor, but... I just happen to have that one right handy dandy. So there is that one, 24.312, 313. That's pretty bang on for, uh, for what it says. Okay, cool. Do I have anything else? Oh, it's something right in the middle. There's 2.5K. 2.46. Two point four six, bang on. That is so much better than my original uh, Radio Shack multimeter that I bought as a teenager. This thing is the least accurate multimeter that I have. Even worse than these guys, which are actually pretty damn close to this fluke. One more thing I can fairly easily try: um, AC line voltage. 123 and a third. 123.5.6. That's no problem with that at all. So that's cool to know that it's uh, nice and accurate. I'm curious to see what's inside this guy. Uh, looks like it shouldn't be too hard to open up. Just four screws. I'll... Uh, I'll quickly do that and bring you back just before I open it because screwdrivering isn't all that exciting to watch, I don't think. There we go. So the little piezo buzzers in the back there. Ooh, a bunch of shielding. It's like anti-static bag kind of plastic for shielding. Hmm. That's nice. Screw it down through there. A ceramic fuse. There we go deeper in. Looks like there's a nice big chip right there doing most of the heavy lifting, I'm guessing. So, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, let me pull off all those screws and I'll come back in a second here. And the last screw, okay. And how can I lift that out of there? Trying not to destroy anything. Because I do want this thing to go back together. There we go. Okay, what's that? Okay, that's the insulating sleeves for the probes or some tweezers here can't get my big mitts in there right so there is another little bit of insulation there's the capacitance connectors there's some connectors that go down to the main board several of them so you got one connector down there one there a double row there. There's the capacitor check. There is the, what is that? The uh, transistor check. Power button is an actual button. And the other three buttons, the mode and ECDC and set reset. Oh, it's actually labeled there. Function, set reset, and ECDC. 
those are just little resistive button things. And then two, ooh, calibration, nice. So this big Maxim chip, a Max uh, 130 CPL. And this, they're upside down, but whatever. Uh, what is this? Metex, Metex, uh, KS57C2016-13, which is probably the metering chip. There's a crystal there for it. This is way different than, a mo than the modern meters with their single blob chip on board thing, isn't it? So yeah, obviously I'm not going to touch this calibration uh, pot or this little uh, variable capacitor down here. Oh, variable resistor, sorry, VR2. I'm not going to go too deep into it. I'm obviously not going to reverse engineer it. That would just be insanity, but... Oh, and then there is a zebra stripe, or there and up there, actually. Uh, goes down to the zebra stripe uh, connectors for the uh, for the LCD. Oh, hey, on the back of the LCD, you see that? Metex, or Metex, same brand as this chip here, uh, with a date code of 1998, 5th month, uh, May 31st of 1998. So there, that dates it pretty definitively. Okay, there it's back together. Let's just make sure it still works. Power on, volts DC. Should be about 19 or so. There you go, 19 exactly. Good. So it still works. Always the first thing to check once you've uh, taken it apart and put it back together, right? Sure. Now then, about this serial port. Clearly I'm not going to be able to show you the the original DOS and Windows software that came with it, partly because I don't have a DOS or Windows machine here, partly because I don't have a machine that will read this disc anymore. I'll have to see if I can find some kind of a USB to three and a half inch floppy drive at some point. I'm, if I had wine running, I might be able to run that software, but I don't. So plan B, I have a, a USB to serial adapter which should theoretically allow this to be read by the computer because in the manual it gives some technical information this is from the golden age of radio shack when they actually gave you technical information on the things that you bought so this thing talks at 1200 baud uh, it's seven bit no parity two stop bits and there is the frame of data that comes out of it. So that's fairly easy. And it even tells you how to write a super basic, basic program to, uh, to deal with this, which is really cool. However, I haven't bothered to install basic on my computer, but all you have to do is give it a D and it will give you a single reading. So you can just write something to send it a D every X number of seconds and it will dump some stuff out to you. So let's uh, just try and do that manually. Okay, so I am set up here on uh, my USB serial adapter 1200 7N2. And if I send it a capital D, bugger all happens. That's what it said, right? 1200, 7-bit, no parity, two stops. Right, okay. Send a D, send a capital D, nothing. Okay, maybe that's not the thing for it. Fine. Now, something else I found in my searching was this at linuxtoys.org. I'll put a link down below. Um, so somebody went through and figured this thing out back in the day when it was a current item and they wrote this little C program for it which is pretty cool so I have actually gone and compiled this up I did have to add uh, this standard library to it to make it compile but it seems to have compiled so if I run it I'll see if I can uh, talk make that work Oh, hey, a result. 
So this happens every 60 minutes. So I'm just going to, uh, well, I'll speed the video up and I'm going to change the voltage that it's reading on my power supply each, uh, a, a bit each time. Let's pull it down half a volt or a volt or something. And I'll come back in a little bit here. So while that's happening, let's just go and find out this uh, Metex or Metex or however you pronounce it. Seems like they've been in uh, in a bunch of different industries for over 50 years. And among the things that they make currently are these digital meters. All industrial stuff, all fairly heavy duty. So... I guess that somewhat explains how something so uh, interesting and heavy duty and accurate ended up in Radio Shack's uh, catalog. Uh, it was made for them by somebody who actually knows what they're doing, which is pretty, pretty standard actually. Radio Shack had a lot of uh, deals like that with Sony and Shure microphones and Crown microphones and Cos headphones. I guess that shouldn't surprise me really. Back to this, there's a handful of readings that this thing's taken over a minute or so. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to put it onto this resistor here, which is around 75 ohms. I'm going to spin, spin that around to ohms, and we'll see what the next reading says when it comes out. <laughs> oh, there we go, 77.6 ohms. That's, uh, so you can track pretty much anything. Of course, you could, you could, uh, rewrite that program. There it is here. You could rewrite that program to dump the data to a file or something. Um, you can change the time on it or whatever you need to do. It is C, so anybody who's been messing with Arduinos for a while should be able to translate this at least a little bit and figure out what it's uh, what it's doing you could tinker and just recompile it and the beauty of having a linux uh, system is the, com the gcc compiler is pre-installed it's just one command to uh, recompile this so that's pretty slick that satisfied my curiosity um, and i can actually still use this guy in the modern day even though it's got uh, fairly old school connection on it uh, with just a simple little ebay usb to serial adapter and a chunk of random code that i found online it still works just as well as it ever did i hope that was a bit of a nostalgia trip for some of you and a bit of a curiosity for people who hadn't encountered this guy before i had fun uh, digging through it and just uh, reminding myself of what this guy could do Thanks for watching. I do appreciate that. As always, comments and questions down below. There'll be some links down in the description. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned that already. Um, I will talk to you later.